In this video, I'm gonna to explain to you very quickly how to set up URL parameters within your Facebook ads. This is so important because it allows you to track the traffic you're sending from Facebook to your website and Google Analytics or any other measurement platform you're using will then be able to measure the performance of that traffic. Because what you can't track, you can't measure, what you can't measure, you can't improve, what you can't improve, you can't scale. So let's dive in and I'll quickly show you how. Okay, so we are in the system and let's just set up a quick sales campaign in this dummy account that I have created. So if you're watching this video, you should be familiar with this sort of stuff anyway. So this is the campaign level, ad set level and the ad level. So we're gonna go into the ad level and we are going to scroll right down here. So this is the destination URL. So what we wanna be doing is clicking here and let's put my website uh, in there, Lilac james.com and we're going to click build url parameter now up here what i always do is write meta ads for the source so this is just where we want to be telling so when we go through to google analytics we want to know where this traffic has ultimately come from so meta ads or meta whatever you want to put will allow you to communicate to yourself or to anybody else who's reviewing the data where that traffic source is from um, then we want the campaign medium so what we do is we come down and we select campaign name the reason why i don't select campaign id is because if you select campaign id what you're going to get is a big long list of numbers and it's not going to make that much sense to you if your naming convention is correct within facebook ads it should read something like uh, lilac james sales campaign may 2023 and then whatever the product or objective it is that you're targeting um, so it'll become really really clear what where the traffic's coming from what specific campaign is driving that traffic and like i say we select campaign name down here, you might want to test uh, the difference between traffic from your ad sets. So we would select ad set name. Ad sets is where you define your audience predominantly. So if you're testing two different audiences and you want to see what the user engagement is behind these audience, how long are they spending on time, how many sales each audience are making, etc., then you're going to want to set that ad set parameter. And then down here, you can go into even more granular detail and you can have your ad name so if you want to know how particular creatives are doing particular content particular ads are doing then you can go even more granular into that ad name it might be that you're not actually that bothered about how individual ads are doing you just want to group it together in which case you would just strip this out okay but once you've determined what you need you hit apply and there we have it there is your url parameter just there um Next, what we'll do is we're going to jump into Google Analytics and I'm going to show you exactly how then you interpret the data and you look at the data within the Google Analytics system. So let's get into that. Okay, so this is a standard GA4 account. So what we're going to do is we're going to come into acquisition. Now, you can do this in any part. So it depends what uh, data you want to drag out. But just for ease, I'm going to go into traffic acquisition so we can see... Uh, so we can see the traffic and how it's performing. So when you scroll down here, of course, you've just got unassigned, uh, organic search, cross-network, etc., etc., all the normal stuff. So how do you see your meta advertising traffic? You're going to click, oops, I clicked the wrong button there. So you're going to click this little drop down here and you're going to click session source medium. You see how that has then reorganized all the data here. So what we're going to do is come down and you can see that we have a couple of campaigns here and a further one there. And you can then see how many users it's driven. You can see how many sessions it's driven, uh, how many of those were engaged, what the average time per session is. So we can see here that the average time per session isn't that great, but we know from the data within the Facebook system that these campaigns are driving a 10x ROAS. So we're not that bothered because these aren't engagement campaigns or you know these are campaigns designed to make sales. So the average person is dropping off relatively quickly after not finding what they want, but we know we've got a 10x ROAS, so we're not too concerned about that. Um, and you can see the events per session and you can see a range of other metrics. And if I wanted to, I could compare the engagement time 
between the sessions, how many uh, pages of people viewing um, per session and any other metrics that I set up with Google Tag Manager or Google Analytics. So that's how you look at it, guys. And that's it, guys. I can't stress how important these tracking links are. Don't forget, if you can't track what you're doing, then you can't measure it. If you can't measure it, you can't improve it. And if you can't improve it, you can't scale it. One of the big reasons I see for people stopping their Facebook activity is because they can't measure progress. So they can't see these incremental gains that they need to make with their digital marketing. So don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel for more content on Facebook advertising, Google advertising, SEO, digital marketing, and more. And we'll see you next time.